to the rationalmister.com's daily brief. The answer to your question is learn the goddamn process, trade your trading plans, don't take too much risk on any one trade, and just let yourself get rich. Hello everyone, welcome back to the rationalinvestor.com's daily brief. Woohoo, party! Uh, you know what I think probably the absolute best expression for uh, the market right now? Brian's usually right, but Brian's usually early. And I've been barking about how the market has been for probably... I think actually yesterday I went and dug up uh, the first tweet uh, that I put out. Um, I don't know, and I think it was like the beginning of March where I said, uh, you people be careful. Uh, this is starting to get a bit dangerous. This was the original tweet here. Um, actually, uh, and this was the reply. I think this was the original tweet here. Uh, yeah, there we go. So uh, I started out the conversation uh, March 2nd, saying uh, there's a number of reasons I could see that uh, this bull is uh, getting a bit old, and you better be careful with your hard-earned money. And unfortunately, a lot of people, I don't know what it is, when it comes to money management, people, they just act so silly, so irresponsible with uh, with their finances. You know, I mean, do we need to mention Mr. Gucci, a $5,000 master course on buying Bitcoin? Oh, boy, I wonder how all those people are feeling right now. Anyway. Um, we'll say I was pretty darn impressed. Uh, the other day, I basically walked, uh, you know, uh, started off on the Sunday show uh, going, you know, geez, whiz, this is looking awfully dangerous. I do remember on the weekend, uh, as we were coming out of the weekend, we were talking a little bit about sort of weak buy signals. And man, those signals just got crushed. Um, but uh, Sunday evening, when I came back from Lili, I was looking at the futures markets. And this was the post that I put out at that time. I was like, holy moly. I mean, this is absolutely textbook trade location. It's a beautiful indicator confirmation. And interesting enough, price structure, if this was off a four-hour chart, if you drill down to the 30-minute chart, this is an absolute textbook Adam and Eve setup. Uh, and uh, shameless plug sales pitch. Uh, Tuesdays, we have our Stock Pickers Club meeting. Um, uh, Tuesday evenings in North America time, I suppose that's like uh, probably early, early morning for you Europeans and probably uh, Wednesday, middle of Wednesday for you Asians. Uh, but uh, our, our kind of captain of that group, I'd say, uh, David O, he's a huge, huge fan of uh, Adam and Eve uh, setups and tops. And I have to say, you know, I, I was even uh, tweeting and barking about it. I mean, this was just the absolute most perfect. This is that 30 minute chart. Absolutely most perfect example of an Adam and Eve top. I mean, you just, you're not going to get a better example. And incredible that it's set up right off of my big fat fanny. Well, wait a minute. No. Brian's favorite fib. <laughs> uh, one of those two. Anyways, interesting watching through yesterday, humming and hawing. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? And I just left the order working at two to one. Just not going to tinker with this shit. Then all of a sudden, the Asian market opened up, and it was about 7, 8 o'clock my time, middle of the Japanese session, and they just started selling and selling hard. And uh, it was great to see, of course, uh, two to one. The What I try to teach people is try to put on a couple contracts uh, and then uh, see if you can let one go at like two to one kind of idea. Uh, and then you've got a runner on and eh, who knows where the hell, uh, the market's going to blow. Maybe put the uh, stop to scratch on the runner and just see what happens. So, uh, this is the updated uh, version real time of that trade. So there is the top. There is the two to one. It was hit, like I said, through seven, eight o'clock last night through the, uh, Asian session and the market just keeps melting down here. It is interesting how we're coming up into a, a mountain man level and 61.8 is interesting enough. I actually took a trade in crude oil 
off a 61.8 fib here this morning and it worked out quite well. Um, so uh, fascinating that the market's trying to bottom off here. But I would just simply say, and I don't think anything has changed here with my thinking, is the gap goes all the way down to, hey, Brian's big fat fanny out there down at 78.6. Also, off of this massive M top, uh, fog and bombs uh, start kicking in here. Um, and then also, too, off of this cute little uh, top, we have an extreme fog and bomb uh, down in this area. So I still think that there's a pretty high probability that we have to work our way down into this level. So I'm not really in a hurry to do anything with this position. As you can see, we sold two, bought one back, and it, that got filled there, not there. <laughs> what the hell? Doesn't really matter. Point here is we've got the runner on. I might actually employ things like three high-low method uh, to start locking in uh, profits. You can see I've got one key high here if they take this low out. Uh, two key highs, three key highs. That would mean that actually, and as it stands right now, one key high, two key high, three key high, I'd actually be able to move my stop right now. I was sitting at scratch on that runner. I'd be able to move my stop to there. Woo, big, big profits. <laughs> but, you know, this just reiterates the message that I've been trying to convey of late uh, to everybody that I think this is all to do with the buy the rumors, sell the news. Uh, scenario of Bitcoin. I think the price got bid up artificially because of all the ETF nonsense. Uh, and interestingly enough, I actually would have thought that this thing would have topped out somewhat the same as uh, as 2000 and, uh, 2015-16 cycle. Which then it was just a V top and it was about uh, 20, 30 days prior to the happening. And keep in mind, too, that the ultimate low that was put in wasn't until about 17 days following the happening. So ironically enough, the happening itself simply becomes almost like uh, lost in the weeds uh, when you look at this uh, back in hindsight. But to all intents and purposes, I do like the idea that uh, they have topped the market well ahead of the fundamental event. You know, I mean, huge, huge run ups here. Uh, anybody who is uh, playing the crypto market, if you didn't make your money on this move, maybe you better not play the crypto market. <laughs> I mean, the profits were just absolutely insane. And what's really bothersome, of course, is that you had people up top here come in and say, you know, please buy Bitcoin or buy my master class and uh, I'll just write Bitcoin on a piece of white paper. And that's my recommendation. Thank you for the $5,000. Have a nice day. Uh, anyway, it is what it is. Um, I would actually prefer just to like leave this position alone and don't even touch it. Eh, but we'll see what happens. Only time will tell. I'm sure I'll figure out a way to tinker uh, uh, and screw out this trade. Uh, so, you know, obviously with that kind of backdrop, and of course uh, we've been barking about the total as well. We had a really weak signal there uh, through the weekend that was just completely smashed. Uh, so no reason to be long here whatsoever now. Um, and frankly speaking, this was terrible, terrible long trade location. And really, it was just a question. Remember when I did that video on Sunday, I was kind of like, you know, they are trying to push this up, but let's just see what happens. And like I said, when the uh, futures guys came back uh, on Sunday night, oh boy, all hell broke loose. So uh, to all intents and purposes, I actually think that this is a harmonic failure here uh, across the broader crypto market. We've done some serious technical damage. As I said, things like RSI indicators are breaking down egregiously here. You need to see some sort of W here just to even say that the, uh, the selling has abated and I don't see anything like that at all. You might see something maybe off of like a 30 minute chart kind of idea because that was a pretty precipitous drop. So could we have some sort of dead cap bounce here? It wouldn't be out of the question. I think probably more importantly is when we actually go through, uh, you know, for instance, the little old lady portfolio kind of idea. Um, and actually that's, uh, that's an older list. Um, let's uh, I'll just show you the cleaned up list. And uh, we're still trying to clean up this uh, reporting on the website of our uh, crypto portfolios. It's remarkable how much of a 
of a slog all this is, um, but uh, actually today is Tuesday. So if you do have uh, questions about the site, the algos, uh, crypto performance in particular, we have on our crypto expert, TRI CTO, uh, Seward on the call here Tuesdays. Seward, do you want to say hi to these good people? I don't know whether he's here right hi. now or not. There you go. <laughs> he said hi. <laughs> but as you can see, uh, and <laughs> maybe this is a commentary, commentary on uh, Seward's uh, uh, disposition today. <laughs> it's, Seward, are you, uh, are you slightly bullish of crypto over the long run? You like crypto, don't you? Yeah, over the long run, uh, it's fine. Yeah, over the short run, yeah, yeah. this might be a bit difficult. <laughs> so just be prepared, folks. And of course, I mean, God, if you'd listen to anything that I've been barking about over the past couple months, this is actually just business as usual. There was nothing new about any of this. There certainly was nothing different about any of this this is just business as usual so uh eh, don't get too wrapped up in the emotions of this but the whole point of our education program is we want to actually convert our trading from an emotional experience oh bitcoin circle jerk circle jerk circle jerk to i'm running a small business of trading and i trade setups and I don't know where the fuck the market's going to go. Put all that kind of opinion away and just trade setups. You see an Adam and Eve come in in a short trade location. Well, don't be surprised that price comes off a chunk. It's, it's just business as usual. Nothing new here whatsoever. And, you know, a really great analogy. Remember I was saying, oh, look at uh, 61.8. Hey, we're getting a bit of action here. Well, I took a crude oil trade this morning, and uh, it was in uh, little Top Steps uh, tryout account, so uh, making money for uh, good old Johnny Hoagland and uh, and um, uh, Nebraska, Michael Patak. <laughs> I, I would prefer to say that I was working for John Hoagland, <laughs> but anyway, that's here and there. Uh, point of the matter here is this was actually pretty cliche, nothing really out of the ordinary. I uh, woke up this morning, had uh, Mr. ICT structural fail here. So hunting that uh, 61.8 tag, you know, you saw the exact opposite trade there on crude just a moment or on uh, Bitcoin tagging the 61.8 to the downside. Hit the uh, sell button here and actually even put the order one tick above 19 just to be cheeky. And sure. Sure enough, got filled at one, take profits, call it a day. Next bus in 10 minutes. Uh, it's just business as usual. Uh, you can see stocks are not happy here whatsoever. Uh, and, you know, the interesting thing about all this is I don't, I don't really think a heck of a lot has changed here. I mean, actually, I was putting together some sheets because uh, somebody was suggesting maybe I go in and talk to the public a little bit more actively uh about what i'm doing uh, in the market and sort of my prognostications i mean we've been following this is an absolutely fantastic tool and everybody can build this it's not rocket science this was uh through of course the jupiter or saturn cross insurrections the whole damn thing you know what you should have taken away from this is holy crap this is a weekly price chart uh the days of runaway deflation uh, seem to uh, have uh, gone by the wayside. And we've just been climbing higher and higher and higher with regard to the inflationary pressures in our society. And everybody should look at this. I mean, it should not be rocket science. I mean, it is interesting. We're coming into a couple of uh, technical objectives. But this darn thing keeps Wing out. So, uh, and also too, you have heard me barking at length recently about the crude oil market. Uh, and, you know, the crude oil market uh, with uh, energy prices rising, uh, that unfortunately is very deflationary uh, and interest oh, and price comes off. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, what's interesting about this is if you look at the daily chart, do you think we're done this? I don't think so. Um, I've got this huge uh, bullish ABCD. You have to zoom all the way out to here. Uh, um that really suggests we ought to get up into this sort of $88 area. 
interesting good old Johnny Hoagland sitting up there at 87. We had 2.618 floating uh, out there up at uh, 86 and change. And this thing looks like a runaway train. So I don't see any pressures abating anytime soon. If we're really lucky, maybe. But uh, anyway, point of the matter here is I don't really actually want to be too aggressively short. That was just a setup that fired here this morning uh, off of the ATR level. That's, you know, sort of lower time frame stuff. But higher time frame, I don't see any reason why this uh, this thing should slow down. I mean, if and when a top comes in, great. We'll talk about that. But for the time being, all I'm seeing is higher highs and higher lows. Old market, holy crap, it just keeps ratcheting higher and higher. Made another new higher today. So from the inflation perspective, uh, it makes sense what I'm seeing out of the, the our bond proxy and our inflation proxy for any time soon, folks. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, there you go. So obviously, good Lord didn't like me saying that. You know what? It's going to be better just because you got the good old beamish on your side trying to keep everybody honest. I'm doing my fiduciary responsibility, good Lord. Uh, so oh, please give me the permission to continue on doing this for these good people. And maybe we can actually make a positive difference in some of these lives. What do you think, God? Is it? A All right. On that note, Chris, that's 35. That's 15 minutes. And actually, you know, I didn't even really get into the econs in the news today. So we'll just quickly <laughs> zip around to that. Of course, you know, obviously Bitcoin and what's going on in there uh hugely influential in all of your lives um as you can see the bond market is not happy here at all and i think that's why the stock market is going to ultimately come to this pressure it was interesting uh people had pointed out in lunch that uh and actually this is more crypto here but uh maybe i should just wind this up i wanted i just want to mention i did see you know kind of a reeve um the u.s dollar index is coming in this uh, we did have a, a, a much bigger a higher time frame uh bullish a b c d uh objective this teal one uh, that hit here this morning this is of course it appears uh, that uh it, this is still very much a risk off product the fact that it was ratcheting higher there's kind of a warning that hey there was trouble in risk land so maybe we're going to talk. I still have one more minor ABCD and up to this 2.618 that I think needs to be hit before this is all said and done. Uh, and the problem here, of course, is that we are coming into my birthday and we all know what to expect in Brian's birthday. Oh, boy. I still think we have to get through this uh, celestial peak. So this was um, the S&P 500. The uh, just the futures contract through that's uh, that eclipse window. I actually was expecting one push to the upside into the solar eclipse. If this is it and it's done and it rolls over, fine, so be it. Uh, but don't be shocked. And you know, the irony of it all is with Bitcoin is believe it or not, even though you've heard me talking relatively negatively about this trade, I actually think that Bitcoin is still just sitting in a trading range. It's just such a massive run up here. That just even, you know, a day where it's down 5, 10 Gs, it's just like, well, it's just sitting in a range. We won't actually know that this thing has topped out, quote unquote, until we actually start closing below these levels down here. And we're nowhere near there. So you might actually find that, you know, uh, walk weekends, you know, uh, probably a lot of people that did buy up here at 70 Gs are starting to second guess their uh, decisions. They might even panic sell on some sort of dump into these lows. And then the irony of it all is we ratchet back up into that eclipse window. So never a dull moment. Uh, just keep your eyes peeled. Uh, and I don't actually have like an official top in Bitcoin. Like if we'll finish off the free broadcast here. You know, what do we have here? We have a peak with that left a huge wick and a tail, uh, you know, panic sort of dump. That left a huge tail. Did I say wick? I should have said wick. Anyway, huge wick, huge tail. And all we're doing is going through the process of just washing back and forth. Wicks and tails like to be eaten. So, you know, take heart. You can see 13 EMA is racing up here very quickly. 
I wouldn't be surprised if we kind of settle down here a little bit and actually go sideways a little bit here uh, as we actually go through the happening event. And then as we sort of head into Brian's birthday, we all know that Brian's gift to all of you is I uh, engineer prices to go on sale. <laughs> if you are long from a terrible level, then you think of Brian's birthday as an absolute nightmare. And I might actually think of it as a bit of a gift. So if we do get the dump on my birthday, just consider it that they're backing it up. They're cleaning up the excesses. They're getting ready to put another bottom in the market. And then we'll get ready for our summer silly season. And usually that kicks in around the end of June. So there's your summary. Uh, Brian's usually right, but he's usually early. I've been barking for the past month or so. Uh, this is looking pretty dangerous. And indeed, we are starting to get some uh, some bearish price action. And if anything, the one thing that I think you really need to take away from this is this whole darn celestial eclipse window. Because the eclipse started this whole bull run. There's the that, that last eclipse window. And you can see the market structure breakout. And lo and behold, here we are, a new eclipse window. And all of a sudden, the market state is completely changing. And if you actually want to be in this business over the long term, you have to learn about this. You have to appreciate what just happened there. Uh, I don't necessarily think this is a new bear, but I definitely think that the eclipse window is kind of sort of reset all of this insane bullish euphoria. And of course, the way the humans were acting in here, you know, I don't need to mention, I've said it a, a number of times, it, it was just getting a little stupid. So if anything, this is healthy. And no, nothing is different about any of this. There's nothing different. It's just human behavior and human psychology. All right. Have yourselves a great day. Hugs and kisses. Come on over and join us for the after party. I always love having conversation with Sjord. Of course, he is uh, the fundamental uh, guru when it comes to crypto at TRI. And I think uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Rune today, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, sir? I think so. Uh, but uh, he might uh, have all the also other uh, topics in mind to chat about as well. So, all right, everybody, all the best, hugs and kisses, and bye for now.